happy Monday. Welcome to the Squadcast, where myself, Steve, and Caboose break down the latest in gaming and geek culture. And this week, we brought a friend like every week, but this week, um, this friend is showing me up with their background. Welcome to the show, bro. <laughs> You look like you're in a hospital ward, Camille. <laughs> well, maybe I am, Brock. Maybe this is just how I'm living life, okay? Um, uh, no. All right, I'm not judging. <laughs> well, I have, I don't know if anyone can see it, but I have like uh, cables here. So I, I do have my figures, okay? I have my Dragon Ball figures. I just don't have oh, anything. Wow. Uh, so that's that's why that's happening. But Brock, tell me about what, you, what is what is going on back there. What is your favorite figure you have behind oh. you? Oh boy! I, I mean, there's so many, but obviously, among all things, it's the Robert Pattinson Funko Pop from the movie Twilight <laughs> is uh, a big favorite of mine, right there. And you know, That's on brand. Uh, everyone at home, I think that just tells you the type of person Brock is. <laughs> so, welcome to yeah. the show, Brock. Thank you for sh sharing oh, Rob with us. <laughs> it's I a good, it's a great Funko. Okay, I bought them at Hot Topic for like three ninety nine. Yeah, well, That's I a mean. Deal. They're all on sale. Let's yes. let's face it. It wasn't it wasn't a great series of movies. Anyways, um, oh. for you at home, you know every week um, we break down the latest in gaming and geek culture. Like I mentioned, this week we're going to be talking about Ubisoft and Star Wars collab. We're going to be talking about uh, Bethesda's Indiana Jones tease. MK movie info and our first look at that, um, as well as Brock's going to be bringing us some info on Sackboy's latest adventure. Now you know the topics. Get all your thoughts in your head. Let us know what you're thinking in chat as well as on Twitter at Squad State. Let's get started. I'm going to kick it off with uh, last week. I think this is one of the most randomest news <laughs> pieces that happened last week. No one was expecting it. But Ubisoft uh, pretty much announced that they are working on a Star Wars game. So mm -hmm. they're collaborating with Lucasfilm Games, and they're going to be bringing an open world, new story driven Star Wars game. Um, obviously, this is something that fans have wanted for a very long time, mm -hmm. and that's making a lot of people excited. But I think it's also making people excited because, well, EA is not behind this one. <laughs> How did you guys feel about the news that we're finally getting an open world game for Star Wars? And how do you feel about Ubisoft being behind that? Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go I'm, to you, Caboose, first. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, I, I, I'm, I'm into it. I'm into it. I will say, though, okay, like I get it. EA, they, they flubbed the bag a couple of times with Star Wars games. But, like, I don't think enough people are realizing, like, I, I didn't necessarily play it, but from everyone that i know who has i don't think people are realizing like apparently how good of a game jedi fallen order was yes mm. um like i think ea has, no, has hot garbage hot garbage oh is this wow. a hot take is oh, this a hot take or... hot take. <laughs> i i could not stand that game just what story wise wow. great damn but the okay. same repeatable gameplay loop on uh, it was so bad like, how many times did you need to fall down, like, a hill to, like, hide a loading time? <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, uh, but, okay, well, either way, uh, it's exciting to hear that Ubisoft's working on an open-world Star Wars game. It's exciting to hear in general. Like, I think what I appreciate about it is what everyone appreciates, that e EA is not working on it, because it means... EA doesn't have the exclusivity yes. anymore. Right. And, now, and that's something, and actually, I'm just going to mention in there that's mm -hmm. something that Lucasfilm Games mentioned that they're open to yep. any developer coming to them with ideas. So yep. this is now, we're going into a whole new world. Yeah, this is what this is what it. Oh, I see what you did there. Uh, this is what we should have. Uh, <laughs> this is what it should have been. You know, like this is. Uh, you take a property like Star Wars, uh, such a massive IP. You should go to multiple different developers. You yeah. go to just EA or or everybody under EA's umbrella, and it's really kind of shackling some of the creativity that a studio like Ubisoft might have for a Star Wars game. So. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe how long Ubisoft has had like this idea, how long they've wanted to make this game, and now they have the right. opportunity to, which is great. I'm uh, I'm excited. I'm looking forward to it. But I'm assuming we're not going to see it for a long while. We're probably not going to see it for a long while because they've only been working on it for a year now. 
So I, you know, what makes me really excited with that though, you know, it's going to be a next gen game. Yeah. Um, So it's going to be made for next gen. It's going to probably look beautiful with ray tracing the word that everyone wants uh, in their game. (laughs) And yeah, I'm excited for that. Steve, how about you? I'm, I'm really stoked on this news again because of the whole EA exclusivity. I think that they squandered that whole deal. I mean, we're eight years into a 10 year deal and arguably, yeah, okay, Jedi Fallen Order, good to great game, depending on who you ask. Squadron's another <laughs> niche kind of title that some people like, some people don't really like the Flying Sims. And then you've got a very mediocre first-person shooter and another first-person shooter that, you know, made people lose their minds over microtransactions, went to court over microtransactions, and really set off this whole conversation of how other developers are handling their microtransactions. So altogether, it's not really great for yeah. EA. And if I was Disney, I'd be really annoyed, upset, and I'm not surprised that they didn't really want to move forward with an extension on that deal. So when you look at it and you know, if you're Disney and Lucasfilm and you're thinking to yourself, okay, I want to make... I want there to be an open world Star Wars game. Who are you going to go to? The yeah. studio and publisher that makes open world. Uh, pretty much, yeah. Pretty exclusively. Yeah. But what I think is really exciting is that they approached Ubisoft Massive, which is the developer, obviously, that's behind The Division. Yes. And it's very mm. telling that in that announcement, they specifically called out that they'll be using the Snowdrop engine, which isn't what uh, Ubisoft typically uses. They use the Anvil engine on stuff like Far Cry, Assassin's Creed. Snowdrop is almost exclusively used on The Division, with the exception of like the South Park games. So knowing that, you can kind of almost see what they're going to do. And I I refrain from saying that it's going to be like the lazy attempt and just being like, here's The Division, but in space, Star Wars. But at the same time, I really like The Division, and I think having a Star Wars game set around what the division brought to the table is really cool. Like I just imagine a, a game like you're playing as rogue so- or rebel soldiers infiltrating a empire city, like a gigantic city, and you're going th- through the streets and stuff. That's really cool to me with the amount of detail that Ubisoft Massive brings to the table. See, that's interesting for maybe a few missions. Um, I if I want okay, anyone if they're thinking a Star Wars game, you want to be. A Jedi. I'm I was just sorry. about to ask the question. I was like, I wonder what the, what the whole panel thinks here of whether or not, like, if you get an open world Star Wars game, would we re- would we rather be like the grunt soldier on the ground, the the rebel soldier or the imperial soldier, or would you rather be like a Jedi or a Sith? You know, and I think, I mean, I wonder if there that you can get both in an open world. Game. Maybe I think Maybe. you're gonna play as a hunter or something like a Mandalorian. There's right. no if you're a Jedi, Ooh. just be overpowered. Like you just walk around killing everybody. Mandalorian, the way to go. Up the Mandalorian. Yeah, why? Can't, that's actually a really yeah, good sure. idea, Brock. I'm on uh, that idea. So I think the big Mandalorian bucks. experience <laughs> and the mechanics, of a, <laughs> mechanics of a Mandalorian would work well with division mechanics. Um, maybe that's what they're going to, especially because they are clear that their relationship with EA is going to continue. So right. they're looking to reinvigorate Battlefront. They're looking to um, continue with Star Wars Squadrons and also Star Wars Jedi uh, Fallen Order. Mm-hmm. So if we know that they kind of have that Jedi experience out there, they have that, you know, a shooter, the uh, simulation experience mm-hmm. as well, and whatever Battlefront's trying to be, then you Mandalorian makes sense, especially because the show was so successful. I think maybe they're expanding and we know that they're expanding because they also announced that they're doing the, they renamed themselves Lucasfilm games. Right. Yeah. Um, so they're really trying to broaden uh, their gaming aspect and it only makes sense to have that um, with the Mandalorian. I, although I don't know, is the Mandalorian continuing? Like, is that show just done with it a one-off? Yes. It is right. No, I don't think so. Season three is yeah, coming. Season three coming. Yeah, yeah, it so, comes after the Boba Fett show. Mm-hmm. So if that if that's coming up, um, we could probably expect it to be going on for a few more seasons as well. Mm-hmm. It would make sense to after that show wraps, release a game about like uh, a Mandalorian. Yeah. I'm Here's actually the thing: really when is this game idea. ever going to come out? Like <laughs> Ubisoft has like Avatar in the works, Beyond Good and Evil Two, like. 
that boat game that like Sea of Thieves UB edition. Like Skull Star and, Wars Skull seems so far yeah. down the pipeline. I, I, sure, I, whatever I, it is. They'll probably <laughs> change the name. <laughs> But like, they, where's this Avatar game they've been working on for like seven years? That's true. This That's studio, true. I mean, in they're just trying the to—they're just trying to match it. what's going on with the movies development. You know, they just—they yeah, right. yeah. just want to make sure everything's you know consistent. <laughs> but no, I think Brock brings up a really good point, and I think this is what you were kind of um, going on, as Steve. It's like this studio is working on all those games. Plus, we have not. I've been complaining about this. Where's the update on Beyond Good and Evil 2? I've been waiting to hear something about that game. So yep. that is concerning. Um, I do. I enjoy a lot of Ubisoft games. I love Assassin's Creed. Sure. I don't know if I want to see an Assassin's Creed mechanic in. Yeah, I definitely don't want to see anything Assassin's Creed in a Star Wars game. Mm. Um, like just I'm trying to think of what you want to climb a watchtower as a Jedi. I mean, maybe, maybe if I'm uh, Mace Windu, maybe let me use my like, foresight up here. <laughs> <laughs> but other than the division, is there a game Brock that you would pull from the Ubisoft archives or from their library of games and say this would work really well um, for a Star Wars game? Yeah, Scott Pilgrim, but make it Star Wars. Just a side-scrolling mm. beat 'em up. Oh I mean, man, imagine sorry. imagine the build up for it to be just that. <laughs> hey, actually, that's, a decent game. that's a decent game, but that would I think be, it'd be so much fun. That'd be really sad. Well, uh, otherwise, I think, the Divi- <laughs> I think the division is perfect. I love the division. I think having a Star Wars game in that kind of world is awesome. Like just upgrading your armor and yep. you know, taking on like ragtag oh, bands man. of evildoers. You know, like now, especially now that you mentioned like the bounty hunter thing. I mean, this could pretty much be like Star Wars 1313, the reboot, mm-hmm. if anything, right. you know. Um, so th- th- there's a lot of potential here is is like the bottom line. And yeah, studio like Ubisoft, they they make some pretty they make some pretty good games. So taking a property like Star Wars and putting it into their hands is uh, nothing but good news for me. I mean, OK. So mm. we we talked about the Mandalorian, but Ahsoka mm. is also pretty cool. Sure. Ahsoka is yeah. getting her own show. If you wanted a Jedi experience, because I think it's okay. I don't know about you guys. I'm kind of exhausted with the whole Skywalker story. Oh, me too. Things, okay. I we need to move in another direction. Um, and I, I think if you want to explore Jedi's, I definitely don't want to deal with Ray. Um, although those movies were what they were, they're okay, whatever. Um, I think Ahsoka, especially to relive some of the nostalgia of seeing some of those older like characters from yeah. uh, the original or from the Clone Wars, I think that would be really cool. Is there any characters that you guys would want to see from the old movies kind of either be the star of this series um, or make appearances? Jar like, Jar. <laughs> Jar Jar Banks. Yeah. It's Jar Jar Banks. Messes things up. Yeah. It's time he, he gets it's his time. comeuppance. Uh, then you get some great underwater levels. It'd be so much fun. Oh Those God. are always great in a video game. Oh, this, oh this. love a good underwater level. <laughs> Who doesn't? Just my favorite. Yeah. <laughs> Jar Jar would be time. horrible. I- mm, the <laughs> world has been waiting to see his story. You yeah. know, <laughs> he's mm-hmm. been the character with his, the most his mystique. Turn to the dark side. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. He's so mad now. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds good to me. Oh, I'm down for that. <laughs> mad now oh man I'm so angry uh, <laughs> i can't uh, I, I like i like the pick of ahsoka i think that actually is pretty cool um and she is a character like i i didn't watch was it clone wars where she was like yeah, yeah clone wars yeah. rebels yeah right yeah, i didn't i didn't i haven't watched the animated star wars shows uh admittedly uh and and admittedly as well i'm not the biggest like star wars fan i didn't grow up on it Sure. Um, but I would like to see a, sh- a game about Ahsoka, especially that episode with her in season two of Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. 
Um, even as someone who was like kind of a, a fan outside of the bubble, uh, mm-hmm. I was like, this is this is cool. <laughs> like, this is pretty sweet. But I don't know, like at this point, just a Mandalorian game I would be down for. Like, just give me Mando, but <laughs> a game, you know, like and sure. and what Brock was saying is it would be cool, you know, if yeah, if it is division like the ability to like upgrade your armor and you know continue to make it like rpg like that could be a lot of fun and yeah that's really built into the show already right like how he goes throughout every episode he gets another piece of his armor um, or weaponry right so that's actually kind of writing itself and making Mm -hmm. me really excited about this news but yeah when will we see this i don't know i I don't think we're gonna gonna be old luke skywalker (laughs) <laughs> how many Jay. star wars movies will we see before this game i think that's the question or how many will be good that's the better question <laughs> <laughs> another one i'd like to see and i know we joked around about jar jar Binks, but i would love to see like a like a next gen uh pod racing game yes Ooh. Pod racing um, was so much fun. I like wrecked my pod like so many times. Yeah. Um, and I think like it it could be really good. But do you want that and squadrons out there? At the, you know, like no, um, just tie them together. Yeah, right. Yeah. I, I think it would make more sense to bundle them together, and maybe that's something EA could work on. Um, and I don't know if Ubisoft would do a good pod racing game. No. But but the good thing about this this news though is that they're kind of taking this whole Marvel Studios approach where now they can just go to anybody and say yep. okay make this game make that game because like Marvel took the the smart route which is why we got games like Spider Man Iron Man VR arguably Avengers but like they got to approach different studios and say okay well what are you good at make this game use our yep. license and make this game while you know EA kind of just took the IP and was like, well, we can just sit on this. We don't have any competition here. We can make whatever we want. Yeah. Now, obviously, like you mentioned, they're going the route where they're trying to produce games with as many studios as possible. They also announced all these different shows that are coming out within the Star Wars universe. Do you guys feel like that's oversaturation? I think the problem more than anything is the fact that they want to make everything in canon. Hmm. Uh, I think Hmm. another big thing that works so well, Steve, with Marvel games just kind of shopping to anyone is they're like, hey, what story do you want to tell with this character? Uh, Like with Spider-Man, it's not connected to Avengers. It's not connected to like Iron Man VR. It's in it's in its own pocket world. It's its own like story. It's it's not like built on anything. It's just Insomniac's version of Spider-Man. And and with that, you get creative ideas like you know, Harry potentially being Venom or, you know, just like uh, Doc Ock helping Spider-Man with his suit or just the advanced suit in general with the white uh, symbol and stuff like that. Like you get that level of creativity because there's just, there's no shackles. There's nothing holding you back. There's nobody who's going to be like, "Mm, sorry, uh, at this point in time in the Star Wars universe or in the Spider-Man universe or something, this character wasn't doing this. So you can't like mess with that story. You know, that's, that's, I think, the biggest problem with uh, the Star Wars properties is yeah. that there isn't that level of freedom. It makes it fun that like everything is all connected and then the way you can kind of the connect the dots and see how this thing led to this thing. Um, but it just would be more fun, especially on the game side, especially on the game side. I can understand your Disney plus series and mm-hmm. your movies connecting, but on the game side, it would be a lot of fun if they could just do whatever they want and like create stories that's such a good point yeah well you i know? guess the, the counter to that i, I guess hate that it's all connected oh yeah <laughs> me, me too but i guess the counter to that and kind of going like into what how Camille much content said. do i need to consume what's that what's that rock say that again oh i was like it's just like so much media you need to on top of it's just too oh, much yeah. especially if it's like rubbish like yeah. trying to get to the fall order. <laughs> yeah <laughs> But going back to what Camille was saying was that like we can get away from the Skywalker era just completely. Like yeah. the games can mm-hmm. now has the opportunity to explore different eras of Star Wars that you know people might not be encouraged to go see a movie about. We can go like thousands of years back and explore eras mm-hmm. that wouldn't make for the most compelling two-hour movie or True. TV show. 
Yeah. To get around that whole canon, because now you have like this expanded timeline that you can visit, which you don't have to necessarily be tied to. Okay, well, what what's Darth Vader doing at this very moment in the game? Yeah, I. You know what? The I don't only know if the people at Star Wars know there's more. To... There's more to. No, no, no. Go ahead, Brock. There's more to Star Wars than just seventy years. Yeah, uh, exactly. I don't know why they're only stuck in these seventy years. Well, and that's the thing. How come we've never seen any iteration? of the gray jedis in a movie in a tv show you know like because lucasfilm is terrified of doing anything except the stuff that's already worked mm -hmm. yes. you know yeah. they know what's worked even even in mandalorian i love the show but even then they were like people love this stuff right like you guys love you love your love set and like yeah. you know everything all you that love. stuff we, we just want to like, you know, and that's why. And I also think, though, that's why maybe people loved something like Rebels and the Clone Wars, because, yes, it was kind of set within that same timeline, but it introduced new Jedi, someone like an Ahsoka Tano or uh, or like just the, what they did with the Mandalorians on that show. You know, like that that stuff, I think, is uh, has really helped to expand the universe a little bit. But yeah, Lucasfilm is just terrified. They're so scared of like doing something new. When's the last update we got about anything regarding Ryan Johnson's original trilogy? You know, I want to, I'm down for that. I want to see a brand new Star Wars story. You know, everyone knows the brand. Everyone knows that people have lightsabers and shoot lasers. Like we all know what Star Wars yeah. is. Now give me some brand new characters. Give me a new story to carry, to, to care about because- yeah. We like we've got we've gotten the other story wrapped up. We've gotten the Skywalker saga wrapped up. We don't need yeah. to keep calling back to it over and over and over again. Plus, with so many shows, games that they're working trilogy. on, <laughs> he's not I, getting his trilogy. I hope so, but I, I hope not. But me too. I, you know, I don't know. We'll see. I think they just took all that backlash. Yeah, yeah. unfortunately, and, and that, that sucks because you know, with all the games, all the movies, the TV shows that is going to be coming out in the Star Wars universe. You, we're gonna have Skywalker or something. We're gonna have Darth Vader or something. Of course. Um, so there's lots of room to introduce new characters, to introduce, you know, the gray Jedi's, to introduce yep. how the heck do they make a lightsaber? Like there's no talk about the journey of a Jedi. And that's why I'm kind of interested if they were to do a game like you're training to be a Jedi, having to go venture out to find your own crystal and then make mm. your own lights. Like that would be yeah. very interesting because that's something we've never really seen visualized in um, you know, any type of video or video game media. Um, so that's something I'm interested in. But like we said, I think this news is hopeful, but not too hopeful. Um, and we'll all just be waiting till we actually see something and hear more about what the story in this open world is going to actually uh, be about. Yeah. yeah. 